Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Junk Drawer Show Sports Edition, where we talk about our NFL podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. We're doing a new format where we talk about subjects and kind of break them down into smaller chunks so that it's a little easier for you guys to digest. If you have anything in particular you'd like for us to talk about or weigh in on, uh, fantasy football questions, facts, figures, anything like that, let us know down in the comments, guys, and enjoy. Love it. So moving, shifting gears a little bit, I want to start, I, I want to talk about the Packers because we talked about that. But <laughs> first, before we get there, and this one will go to Mike first, and then I'm curious for Craig's answer. C.D. Lamb falling to the Dallas Cowboys, giving them maybe the most dangerous weapons in the NFC as a as a, as a unit. Because I would argue that Mike Thomas is probably the most versatile, dangerous receiver in the NFC. But, you know, I, him and Julio, you know, but... The Cowboys right now, what they're building, can can they be stopped on offense? <clears throat> Dak Prescott's still throwing the ball, right? He is. Oh. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> that's, not, that, not. that's what it comes down to. Um, they've let some offensive line talent go. Um, so because of that, I think that's what's going to hurt Dak. If, he, if his receivers aren't open fast enough, then he's got the, the ability to panic and either make a bad throw, get sacked or fumble or something like that. So that's the knock that I have on Dak, but you can't deny that there's talent there in Zeke Elliott and that your wide receiver core of you have, what is it? Amari Cooper, CD lamb and Michael Gallup. That is danger written all over it. I don't know who they have at tight end right now. Cause I know Witten came back, but now he's gone. And I think he signed he's with the Raiders again, something like yeah. that. He's gone again. Pretty sure he signed with the Raiders. Um, cause why wouldn't you, uh, it's where your career goes to die. Get that um, money. Well, now it's in Vegas. So go gamble that money, make that money and spend that money at the same time. But, yes. um, no, it's, the, the, the Cowboys, as much as I hate to say it, scare the shit out of me now. Yeah, they like, should. Cause you're yeah. low, you're low on Dak and, uh, I'm going to bring it back. You don't get the chunky soup ads if you're not something. They don't give you that shit for nothing. Go go through the tapes, man. Go through the tapes. I don't watch football, but I watch commercials, okay? <laughs> Chunky soup commercials. Those dudes can ball. Why are you so low on Dak? Yes, he's still young. You're missing that whole thing. You're missing, like, the growth learning journey of what you might see bring a title to Dallas, their first title since the 90s. Like, I really feel like they're offensively trying to bring back what that 90s team had, which was – a flourish of talent on the offensive side. I really think that's what they're building and, and snagging Lamb there, who also had kind of a funny uh, viral moment. I think yeah. he was the one where his girl tried to grab his phone, but it was his agent, oh, and he yeah. grabbed it back. It was a nice moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you, break, did you break your work phones? He's back. Yeah, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily low on Dak. It's just out of the offense, he's the one that I have the least faith in. Um, which I don't think that that's necessarily a, a stretch based on no, what let, the talent that they have. You, let me tell you why Dak Prescott's going to be a hero. He has jacked up teeth. And when something like that <laughs> happens to you, you, you develop a chip on your shoulder, right? And, and he hasn't gotten them fixed, even though he's rich. That tells you something that tells you every day he looks in the mirror, he hates himself and it's a motivating factor. I'm scared of guys like that. Those guys are winners. If you ever want to see Jack up teeth from back in the day, go look up pictures of Cristiano Ronaldo when he was a teenager. He fixed them. And he, he made a good choice them. by doing that because now he's a, a, an icon. But Cristiano Ronaldo money is on a different level than Dak Prescott money. Even if Dak, even Dak getting paid is not Ronaldo money. That dude... Nothing is. No. Him and Messi made just obscene amounts of money. Hundreds of there's, millions. They can't. Yeah. There's nothing in the world that they cannot buy. Yeah, that's right. Other than like Amazon, um, all of it. They can't do that. Well, yeah, like companies. <laughs> yeah, but nobody, could, nobody could do that. But like the only things they're they're going to be they're on their path to being soccer billionaires. Whereas like in all of sports on the player side, I believe I do think this is true. I think Michael Jordan's the only one currently. Tiger and Tiger was close getting there and then fell off. And now LeBron is supposedly next in line to get there. There's guys like Jeter and A-Rod that are trying. 
but Michael Jordan's worth a, a net worth in the 2.2 billion range because of his team ownership and the Jordan brand. Like Messi and Ronaldo have this magic mix of like so good at what they do, so marketable and arguably handsome in their own ways, different different definitely different strokes, different folks there. Different kinds but, of handsome, yeah. Correct. But so marketable, 100 million a year in earnings for a couple years in a row, that's sick. Yeah. It's gross. So now I do want to talk about Jordan Love. And I want to talk yeah. about yeah. the Green Bay Packers because I posed the question in last week when we were talking about the draft. I was like, hey, if you're the Packers and he's there, do you take Jordan Love? And I was firmly told no, both of you, emphatically. Not only did Green Bay take him, they traded up. That's right. Craig, break down for me what the Green Bay Packers are thinking right now. I changed my tune. And you know why? I don't like Aaron Rodgers' commercials. I'm going to say it. I think <laughs> he's not very marketable while he is a fantastic quarterback at that position. And Green Bay did a, did a maybe a little boo-boo by doing that. And unless he was in on it, I will say that if they told him, hey, we're bringing in the guy to be the next you, he's going to sit for four years – because that's Aaron had to sit like if they had a conversation, which it does not seem like they did, but if they did great, otherwise they're saying, get out of here, old guy. We don't want you. No moss. We got one more with you. And then, boop, and then he's going to be a big old free agent. I think green Bay is, as I've read, Matt LaFleur is tired of the shit or whatever that means. I, I don't know what that means because when you're tired of a top three, maybe top five now, starting quarterback talent, you dumb as a, as a head coach. You, you don't tire of that. You tire of Ryan Fitzpatrick. You tire of Josh Rosen. You tire of guys like that. You don't tire of Patrick Mahomes. I don't care if he guys like that or Aaron Rodgers come into your clubhouse, flip everyone off, and say, I don't need any of you, and start masturbating on people's lockers. He's good enough. You're trying to win football games. So the Packers – I think reached for the future, but I knew love was going to go in the first round. I didn't think it was the Packers, but I knew he was going to go. Mike thoughts. <clears throat> I'm, I'm still shocked. And uh, I, I, I just, I think I sent the clip to you. So I don't know if you saw this, uh, Craig, I don't know if you watched the Pat McAfee show at all I do or not. listen to it, but one of his people that works on his show is a huge Packers fan. Immediately when that pick got announced, he just threw his headset down, got up and walked out basically screaming, fuck, like he was yeah. so yeah. mad, um, still was mad. Like later on in the day, they interviewed Aaron Rodgers. He was on the Pat McAfee show earlier in the draft. And this is why I say he was not in on it. Like you're thinking as a possibility is because he said, I don't know. We haven't dra drafted a, a, a skill position player in the last 15 years. So if we did something like that, that would be pretty cool. Was what he said. Yeah, he was saying, get me a wide receiver. I can throw well. Want to hear? ESPN posted on, I think it was their Instagram, that that day or the following day, the amount of touchdown, like the ranking for quarterbacks. I have this yeah, right now. The quarterbacks Career that have thrown to. Career touchdown passes to first round picks. Breeze, 104. Brady, 105. Peyton Manning, 293. Favre, 127. Marino, 84. Rivers, 35. Rodgers, 1. He gets no help. And his 1 was last year, and that first-round pick was Mercedes Lewis. So not even a first-round pick that they had. It's mm, just somebody else's. <laughs> one you know, never to one first-round pick ever. The team has not done a good job of drafting the wide receiver position or the running back position, in all honesty. They, they've really struggled at guys he that that guy by far i think we could say he does the most with the least uh, around the For league sure. you know and because he, he never had a front office that supported him i i can't support jordan love to a able-bodied aaron Rodgers packers but if they think they're getting the pat mahomes of the draft i get it if that's what they think you know what i mean like if they think he's the truth and he'll be there I get it. It's just I think that 
the fans should be upset. Aaron Rodgers can't be pleased. And the team will suffer as a result because he still has – he's their one-trick ponies on offense. Yeah. So – and I think that they even dropped the ball. Second-round pick. They didn't take – uh, a wide receiver in this draft, by the way, widely believed to be one of the deepest wide receiver classes we've ever seen in NFL draft history. They didn't take one, not one. And their second round pick, I think a lot of people would argue was a bit of a reach running back from Boston college. Cause that's the thing is he's a downhill pound, the rock running back. He's not one of these guys that you can like LaShawn McCoy swing out to wide receiver and throw a swing pass to him. He's I'm running forward and I'm going to hit you and I'm going to fall forward and gain three yards. He does that's the up what he is. With, with sprint up sprint. No, no spin move, no trigger, no Y button, nothing. There, there's some disparity on him at running back. Like uh, he was actually one of my talking points today specifically, um, which I'll kind of get into to the point to where Pat, you'll understand exactly why he's one of my talking points. Um, in the fact that he was ranked ninth on Matt Miller's big boy. Do do. He was ranked ninth pro football focus. Didn't even have him ranked on their big board for running backs. And he was drafted in the second round pro football focus. Yeah. That's probably one of our talking points later. Cause I have some things to say. Um, so I just, Craig, what's green Bay doing? Are they, are, do you I, think I, that this is a, a throw in the towel? Is this a, mm-mm. no, it's, it's LaFleur is not getting along with a Raj, right? A. Raj is, I think, the highest paid, if not the second highest paid. It's close up there, quarterback. Uh, Green Bay is, I think, as a as a fan, you love Aaron Rodgers. He got a title. You know he's good, and the team won't do anything. The front office, which is the GM and the head coach, don't want him there. I think they're saying that. I believe that's what they're saying. Uh, I, I think it's going to be an exciting move when he moves to another team. He is not going to finish his career there. No. So I will pose the question to you, Mike. Quick answer. Are you excited for when Aaron Rodgers goes to the Minnesota Vikings? <laughs> uh, I mean, that is a you think? definite possibility. Um, I think if they void his contract or they release him or even if they do a tradesy to somebody else. Not their own I, No, I don't think. But they traded five to the Jets. And how long did it take him to get to Minnesota? Kirk Cousins' contract is up next year. Kirk is is so much worse than Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that is a – that's a whole his, different – they play different his, sports. His contract's up next year. The Vikings have nothing in the pipeline. The Bears would make a bigger play, I think. Potentially. But I think the Bears are going to be in the race for Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. So. You're right. Unless Trubisky found himself this, this, this offseason – because there were flashes, right? And then there was a whole mess of a season. They were like, what the hell? The hype was so real on that squad. And it, he just couldn't get it done. He's not good right now. I just they have say, done nothing to help him in the offseason as well. No, they have nothing. Literally nothing. But that's another team. Like, where? why don't you go get some receivers? Go get some tight ends. The tight end position is so fun and exciting now. Like, when we were young kids watching football – that I don't even know if you knew a tight end's name. You know what I mean? And now Jeremy Shockey, that was it. Right. I'm a little older than you. He came in, That's you know, if if you go early nineties, there's not a whole lot of tight ends that are moving the needle. I got one, and that's just because it was my dad's favorite player, Mark Bavaro. Mark Bavaro. He's good. And I even know Mark, who that is. So Mark Bavaro saying, like, was a tank. There that's were standouts, but look at the league now. The the skill positions are are wider and you've got teams yeah. that just don't touch them. And as a, I mean, as a Giants fan, I think that shocky Tony Gonzalez era created what we are now seeing, which is Travis Kelsey, who is maybe like a top 10 receiver in the NFL yes. that you put at tight end. Yes, he, he'd be the one. He'd be the one I would put in there and talk about. His hands are too good. He's too big. Gronk's back. How weird is that, that he sat on it? He's broken in so many ways, but he plays so hard for Tom. That's the weird wrinkle about Tom. He loves him so much that he'll get another three concussions and another broken elbow and knee. They might win a goddamn title. They might. They're doing. Let's 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 talk about the these Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Craig, you're you're already there. Talk talk to me a little bit. What are, you, what are you thinking? They're doing the they're doing like um, Lakers have done this before. It didn't work out. Cleveland did it. It sort of worked out. There's there's people in their twilight, right? But they've still got something left. Let's look at Denver Broncos did this, right? So the Denver Broncos brought Peyton Manning in. A few people flocked. That did happen. A few receivers flocked as well. They got some guys on the defensive side. And that first season, Peyton set the NFL record for the most touchdowns in a single season by a quarterback. They didn't win that year. It took the next year where he couldn't throw further than the three of us could throw, but the (laughs) team was stronger. I think if Tom plays out, it's a two-year deal, I think, for 60. If Yeah. It. They're putting all their chips in Tampa Bay, and I love it. It is now going to be called, if it works, the John Elway theory. They're going to do this. Teams are going to do this. They're going to go, and this is where Aaron Rodgers gets his second title because teams are going to go all in on a talent, fill it with a mixture of veterans and available dudes that'll take less to get another goddamn ring. It worked better in the NBA than NFL, but I think we're seeing a trend now. We're seeing something happen where it's like, People want to go play with people. Rob Gronkowski skirted the system, didn't he? He retired. He tried to do music festivals, and now he's a Tampa Bay Buck because his guy, Tom Brady, is a Tampa Bay Buck. And you got to think Tom Brady's happy. He knows that guy will jump in the middle of quadruple coverage, get clipped in the ankles and the head just to catch a ball from him. Like, it's a win-win in terms of Tom and Rob. I don't know if the two of them have stuff to get it done, but that team already had Mike Evans, O.J. Howard, other pieces of the puzzle. The Bucs are weirdly dangerous now. Weirdly dangerous. Mike, how are are the Bucs going to look this year? They arguably don't have a running back, so let's start there. Yeah. Yeah. uh, They drafted uh, third round, Kashawn Vaughn, out of uh, Vanderbilt. So, touche to you there, sir. Uh, he is a running back that has a name. Uh, but no, That's this it. team this team. I is... heard he ran between a 4-2 and a 4-7 at the 40. I heard that. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> in there. Not wrong. Um, no, no, I, 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 they're going to be interesting. Uh, to me, the funniest thing is how little Belichick cared about Gronk coming out of retirement because he comes out of retirement. He's still under contract with the Patriots. Correct. That's how that works. That's that's the game. So he came out of retirement saying, I want to play for the Bucks, and then legitimately Belichick's like, eh, fourth round pick. Right. Like fourth round pick got you one of the NFL one hundred best tight ends of all time. No, NFL like, one hundred best players of all time. He he was in the total of the yeah, best overall. He was in the NFL 100 best. Yeah, right. You're correct. Not even best tight ends. Best play, 100 right. players of all time. Gronkowski was in there. And I follow him and his uh, fitness girlfriend on Instagram. He looks in shape as hell, bro. Well, dude, that's that WWE contract. He's holding a belt right now. He's got to defend that belt. He has the 24-7. I, don't, I hate that I know that, but he does have that. Yeah, because it's the most useless title in the world. That's correct. Like, <laughs> But, but look at that division, and there's a massive drop-off after the Saints, right? So And the Saints are playing a one-year game, too. Like, it's Drew's last hurrah kind of thing. They want to learn Jameis as much Drew juice as he can to be the future. Because I think Peyton sees what we all technically know about Jameis Winston. Dude can ball, but he has no discipline. Like, he has every skill in the bag no discipline, and might not care. He might be one of those guys that's so good, best in the room, gets the Heisman, gets the national title, steals the crab legs. Nobody cares. He's so good, he doesn't give a shit. But what if Peyton thinks, I think it's proof, he thinks he can fix that. So if that the years collapse and Drew's really on the decline, it's the Bucks now. Bucks right now. Saints continued success. I don't know because the Saints have dominated that division. Dominated. Yeah, it hasn't even really been close. Not cl- no, not close. That's why the Bucks. They're interesting factor. They sneak a wild card, or God forbid, they do win the division. They're they're dangerous. They're they're super able to win the whole thing. Yeah, I don't think you want to play Tom Brady in a playoff game. No, uh, especially a follow-up. playoff game in warmth. The refs are against you at that point. <laughs> yep, it's fact. Follow up. Tip- how sad is Julian Edelman? Very, very so sad. 
he's going to ask for a trade. <laughs> you know yeah. who else thought that they were on easy street? Sony Michelle. He was like, oh, this is going to be great. His life's going to suck. He's going to take serious carries. Sony Michelle might have a really good fantasy year on a bad team. Like your, your Barry Sanders, Larry Johnson moments of fantasy, because he is going to get fed the rock from a guy whose name I will mispronounce because there's a T and an H, but it's not a th, I think, in it. Stidham, <laughs> Stidham, Stitham. It's Stidham. Stidham. Yeah, whatever. There's an H in there, and it does not appear. You just I saw it with my eyes, but you're not saying it. You're not saying the <laughs> H. He's irrelevant. Sony Michelle, that's my uh, my crazy prediction. 300 touches next year. 300. Three, okay. <laughs> All right. Johnson okay. left message. Whew, that's a lot of touches. Take that's him in the so first many. round of your fantasy draft. This is an early hot pick. Take Sony Michelle. If you can grab him, he is getting the rock. I'll take him so, in the second round. I'm not taking him in the first round. <laughs> are we still higher than he would have been? Sorry. Let's let's take two question. Let's let's take what we're talking about, which is the Saints. Drew Brees, one of the best quarterbacks of all time one of the very few men to throw for over 5,000 yards multiple times oh, yeah. I think there's only one other guy that's done it and I think that guy's name is Tom Brady who you could argue is the best quarterback of all time Probably. is Drew Brees going to mold what Jameis Winston can be and will Jameis hit another level me first or I'll go for I'll be short on this Mike I'll be short because it, it's I do think so I think that's what Sean Payton thinks that's what the front office thinks and drew knows he's at the end of his career i could be wrong this could be media he looks like a nice guy drew Brees. he looks like the type of quarterback that would actually know his time is ending want to hang out with his wife and kids unlike tom brady who happens to have the fucking phenomenal attractive wife kids whatever he won't spend time with them for some reason he has he does take their youth though he does take sucks their youth from their faces he doesn't want to be home. I think that's obvious. Drew Brees does look like he is ready to be home with the wife and kids. I think he's going to attempt. That doesn't mean Jameis accepts. Hard-headed young man. Went number one. All these other things come with that. He is now literally not going to play football for a season. Can he understand that and become the Saints next tier? If he does, if he can eat some humble crab legs instead of what he does— he can be a big fucking deal, a real deal, because a good coach can fix it picks. It's proven. It is That has come time and time again. Peyton Manning, right? Tony Dungy done fixed that. You know what I mean? A coaching, good quarterback coaching and good head coaching can fix the errors that lead to interceptions. And we know he can throw touchdowns. He can throw from anywhere on the field, and he can throw on a frozen rope. The guy's got talent. I actually am going to go ahead and toss in a question for you guys here. This is for both of you now. There was a rumor that uh, Jameis was actually offered a more financially lucrative contract by another team, that team being the Pittsburgh Steelers. Do you think he made the right decision to go sit behind Drew Brees as opposed to Ben Roethlisberger, even though Ben Roethlisberger would have paid him more money? I'll be brief. Ben's a dick. An uh, absolute asshole. It's that's been proven time and time again. Drew, I think, is going to teach Jameis how to be a real winner. And Jameis already got some money. Okay, he's not a poor person. He no. he got some money. He's gonna. I don't know what the deal is. The current deal. It's a one year. I don't know what it is. They're they're going to pay him one year to see if he can uh, buy into the culture of the team. If he does that buy in, you're going to see a three to four year guaranteed deal. He's the future of that franchise if he buys in. That's all I'll say. So my – your question I'll I'll answer with a question. What weapons are there in Pittsburgh? Uh, you got James Conner. You got Juju yeah, Smith-Schuster. That's it. Game over. I'm not, I'm not sold on James Conner. I do Vance not McDonald. believe I – like, I like James Conner. I love his story. I love that he went to Pitt, got drafted by the Steelers, beat cancer – Great, great story. Amazing guy. Seems real nice. I'm not sold on James Conner. I think last year proved that. Juju, he's good. I'm not going to say that he's a bad receiver. I like Juju a lot. But he's not surrounded by much, so you're going to see a shit ton of double coverage. And you know what Jameis is really good at? Throwing to the other team. 
So Juju and double coverage, not ideal. If you don't have a super running game like James Conner was year one, and he's more like year two James Conner, I don't think you have a team that that functions well. I think going to Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, a place where a place where players like to play. People, especially if they're from New Orleans, they always talk about wanting to go back to the Dome. They want to go back to the Dome. They want to play in front of their home fans. Michael Thomas will never leave. He's played in front of those fans. He will be there as long as they are willing to give him money. And I think... So good. Career longevity-wise, this was the better move. Oh, I agree. I I do agree. Especially if he buys in. It might show that he's making good decisions now. It, it may prove that. It may prove that he wants a long, su- successful NFL career. I, I think it's a humble moment to take that second. To t- He's literally walking into a clipboard. No one thinks he's going to start, including him. But that doesn't that say he might have matured like this much, maybe? Well, dude, he got he got LASIK surgery. So I think that's what happened is he was able to read the contracts and was like, well, New Orleans or Pittsburgh, wow, that kind of puts it into perspective. I'm going to go with the team that I could win a ring on the bench for and then take over the following year. You, you brought something up there. I didn't even realize that the LASIK and the contract and the city – uh, no offense to my to my dudes who clearly wouldn't make it this long in the in the podcast anyway. Uh, the food in New Orleans is much better. The culture in New Orleans is much better. Pittsburgh is a is a cool town, cool fucking town. Not as cool as New Orleans. Not even close. 